Well, hello there, my friends. Chris Marcus here with you for Arcadia Economics on Friday, March 19th. Hope you are all doing well out there tonight and going to catch you up to speed on today's Federal Reserve and gold and silver news. Um, certainly an exciting, eventful week. And while I know the price of silver did not really actually reflect that, a lot of unusual things happening that most likely are just all complete coincidences, but we will dig in nonetheless. So I'm going to do a quick check, make sure our recording is coming through and looks like we are good to go. So before we begin, quick note, bringing you tonight's episode is Bluestone Resources, who announced additional drill results recently. Uh, this was yesterday, in fact, 127 meters grading 3.5 grams per ton gold and 21.6 meters grading 12.9 grams per ton gold. And you can see down here, uh, Bluestone Resources, pleased to report additional drill assays from its infill drill program. We'll get that in the description link below so you can check out what Bluestone's been up to. Uh, there is a comment from Jack Lundeen, who'll be joining me in a couple weeks on the show, share an update on their progress. So thank you to Bluestone for bringing us tonight's episode. And with that said, let us dig in where you can see silver on the surface of it. Looks like not all that much happened this week, finishing right around $26.30, let's call it. And excuse me, I have some allergies today, so hopefully you can bear with me. Got to you know, play through a little injury and uh, get you today's news. I have a lot of stories that I've been collecting on here. I'm going to pass along and I know everybody needs some silver talk on a Friday night. So anyway, uh, I'll try to get through this without sneezing too much, but... 2630-ish, let's call it on Silverland. Uh, all right, just to uh, make it friendly for the gold folks. Let's call that 1745. But as you saw in the headline of our video, it was interesting because there was some news today that Drone Pal decline and the Fed declined to extend. Uh, a source of capital relief that was put in place last year during the alleged pandemic. And it's interesting just to show you how quickly things can change here on Wall Street, because as you may have heard me point out yesterday, oh, actually, we'll start today, not get ahead of ourselves. Fed could be a source of market volatility as Powell's and others speak in the week ahead. Um and let's see, where is, all right, well, we got, bear with me here. I thought it was interesting change from two days ago when Powell was the maestro. Now here he's a source of volatility. And why did that change? Because, uh, well, A, Powell is going to be speaking there, but uh, sorry, I have these a little out of order than ideally perfect, but here is, I believe, there we go. Fed declined to extend pandemic air exemption that lowered bank capital requirements. Now, I don't know, on one hand, do I think these banks need further capital relief? You know, we'll leave that aside for another day. But to the degree that basically something changed that is at least taking away credit. Also bizarre because just... On the same day, Powell says the Fed is committed to using all its tools to promote recovery. And yet here it is, they're declining to extend a pandemic air exemption that lowered bank capital requirements. Relaxing the so-called supplementary leverage ratio allowed banks to exclude treasuries and deposits from their reserve requirements. So as you can imagine, the banks are not happy about that. And... Uh, we will see how the market digests that, but just odd that you have that on the same day as Powell says that is committed to using all of its tools, except at least for that tool. Now I would say it'd be great if they didn't use any of these tools at all, but um, in either case, the Fed could be a source of market volatility as Powell's and others speak in the week ahead have written this headline about 10 years ago, maybe 40 years ago, and would have been just as true. But 
It does seem as if a lot of things are coming to a head here. And yes, I did see these reports of several of the mints either canceling orders or selling orders they didn't have in stock. Uh, I'm going to research that a bit more and maybe sometime over the weekend or on Monday comment on that. We'll have something either Saturday or Sunday. Get a day off in there too. But um, in either case, we'll come back to that. And uh, But then you have on top of it, Jerome Powell testifies before Congress twice this week. Um, I wonder what he could say. It didn't go so well when he talked in his press conference or at the Fed meeting this week. Is he going to give the same kind of guidance here where it says U.S. economy set to roar back to life this year, declares Federal Reserve, but central bank chief insists that interest rates will not rise until 2024. So which is it? Is it strong or does it need support? And keep in mind, they've been using this same Whopper since, I don't know, 2010 or so. Whether it was Janet Yellen, Ben Bernanke, or Jerome Powell, we're all saying that the economy is so strong, but how come they didn't raise rates back then? How come they didn't pay off the debt back then? And here it is. I mean, the guy's <laughs> setting a record for inconsistencies in what he's saying here. The economy is set to roar back to life but it needs 0% interest rates. So if that doesn't make sense to you, actually it makes perfect sense. The guy's lying <laughs> is what it is. We'll just be honest and say it. <laughs> no more beating around the bush. Let's see. Uh, yes, here is a story if we get this one loaded. Looks like according to the BBC, US economy to grow faster than forecast says Federal Reserve. So now it's not even just the fastest of all time, despite needing 0% interest rates, but I'm gonna go even faster than forecast. As you can see, that one is too powerful for my computer to handle. So we will skip to this one, which I find interesting. I had noticed this before that somewhere along the lines, the Fed had picked up climate change in their policy mandate, which fortunately, someone in Congress uh, or Senate banking committee actually seemed to be noticed, sent a letter to the Fed, Sharon Powell, warning him against using the central bank's regular authority to implement climate change. Um, now, I know you're going to think I'm making this one up, but they actually, I, at least I saw in an article, they, they're solving racial inequality as well. Broad mandate for the Fed, as you can see. Um, suggests the central bank be looking to assert its influence in playing an indirect role in climate change. How could that go wrong? Uh, <laughs> so maybe that's why Jerome is a bit confused. <clears throat> Although I know, I know the news everybody wants to hear in the rather disturbing exchange between Joe Biden and Vladimir Putin. I'll go on record and say it. I think Joe Biden, if there's ever been an impeachable offense for any president, it's what he said the other night when he says Vladimir Putin's a killer, which let's say, all right, let's say he's true. That makes a lot of sense to go insult him as publicly as possible. Leave your constituents to pay the cost, whatever you might respond. Fortunately, Putin seems to be keeping his cool about this one. And I love that he actually challenged Biden to a debate, which I thought was a brilliant tactical move. And of course, White House shrugs off the debate. Biden will meet Putin when the time is right. What an absolute coward. An absolute coward, Joe Biden. You run your mouth like that. Make threats. He referenced nuclear, S said, and I hope we can bring back the nuclear tension or whatever the way he was and phrased it. The audacity to say that. I mean, he goes offends China, bombing Syria. Iran's issuing warnings because now they're concerned about nukes. Doesn't tell us why that would be. And then he goes and threatens with, the, with using the American people as collateral. He goes and, and threatens Russia because they're pulling away from this BS dollar. And even then when uh, Russia doesn't, you know, take the bait and one up over and says, well, why don't we talk about it publicly so people can hear exactly what you're saying and uh, Biden just makes more threats. Oh, we'll come when the time is right. We'll come in time. And he also, th that was a direct threat he made the other night. And if the whole point of a president is to protect the people, 
whatever Putin did or didn't do, that wasn't the way to handle it. That, I don't know. I don't know what the takes to impeach someone, but if you have the impeachment process and that's not qualified as something that somebody should be removed immediately, um, then just go look at some of the other things this man has done recently. And I know I will not try, uh, well, I have my thoughts about both of these political parties. I think they're one and the same. I'm not going to try and get into the sides of this, but I mean, um, you know, uh, is ridiculous and I'm going to say as much. So <laughs> live in all of the consequences. But now even the Financial Times is promoting a great reset. Thanks to our friends here at GATA that are pulling out some good stories. Uh, I don't think I can get the Financial Times. I'm not a subscriber, but all right, well, we can get a preview maybe. Time for a great reset of the financial system. Uh, and that's a little bit unusual that, A, I can actually read a whole article on Financial Times. That's very unusual. I guess they open this almost every time I click there. You know, I can only get a preview because it's behind their paywall, but they seem to be willing to share their talk of a great reset. So now Financial Times added to the list of mainstream publications talking about the Great Reset. All righty. In pitch for new term, Poland Central Bank chief seeks more in gold reserves. Uh, Poland Central Bank wants to buy at least 100 tons of gold in the coming years to demonstrate the country's economic strength. I believe Poland was one of the ones that repatriated gold uh, a little while ago. And certainly with what the Federal Reserve is doing and then that the Federal Reserve doesn't even seem to know what they're doing, or they say both sides of what they're doing and at the same time probably has some connection to countries wanting gold. Here, Asian gold demand rebounding as Swiss exports surge. So another one of those things that Goldman Sachs doesn't look at in their analysis of gold and silver, but we see Switzerland is the world's biggest gold refining hub, while China and industry China and India are two biggest consumers. Uh, demand from all three plunged last year and has been slow to recover in China, although it seems like that has turned around. So in either case, there you go. There's some demand for gold out there. I don't know why people want these rocks. But here is Pam and Russ Martin Janet mentioning Janet Yellen's plunge protection team has $142 billion to play with. Why is there still an exchange stabilization slush fund that is taking $142 billion and can't talk about publicly what it is that they're doing with it? I mean, that then they use the good of the country uh, rationale for that. So anyway, you know, I know some people call it conspiracy theory, but you can check uh, Wall Street on parade. They generally have some... Pretty highly detailed, and let's see there, uh, is there, okay, no whole citation section from this article, but um, anyway, these are some of the things that you're not often told about, but do most certainly exist, and you can find out there. Uh, good news here, which will be our last story before we wrap up tonight. May 17th is the new IRS tax filing deadline. Here's what you need to know. And... I don't really know what to say about this. It seems a little unusual based on what I've seen out of American politics in the last year, let alone 42 years. It seems unlikely that there was just out of the goodness of their heart that they're, I mean, it, if you're telling me the government's really trying to help people during the alleged COVID pandemic, um, I have a hard time believing that one so that they, of all things, would delay the tax deadline. Well, seems a little unusual to me, but uh, in either case, we will see how it goes. And at least I guess you get an extra month or so for doing your taxes this year before they can convert that funding into military spending as quickly as possible. So with that said, going to wrap up for tonight. Hope you're doing well. Actually, I did have one note. Um, well, fortunately, I remember it. But in terms of the stories from the uh, whether the mints have stopped selling silver, did check it check in with Andy Sheckman, Miles Franklin, 
And he was wondering if that might just be for retail because he was able to recently place some large orders and get filled. So again, I will have fun looking into what's going on with those mints. And I actually did call the U.S. Mint today, hoping to get someone on the show from the U.S. Mint, which would be interesting and get some things cleared up. But either case, that's the news for today. So thanks for being here. I'm going to go get some rest and uh, appreciate all of you and hope you're doing well and good things are happening out there. And I will check in with you again soon.